Good evening and welcome to Prime Business with me, Pius Kojo Baka. In our very first story, increase your revenue base and diversify your revenue sources to support expenditure. That's advice coming from senior partner at Deloitte Yaolate to um, government. According to him, these two measures are among other innovative ways government can consider to boost its revenue mobilization. According to government, about 1.5 million taxpayers out of 7.9 million honor their obligations. Speaking to Joy Business on how to improve revenue mobilization, Yaolati stated that there must be a deliberate effort to support production yields of the country's cocoa industry. Able to secure debt restructuring program and we are heading toward the 55% of GDP, we should increase our revenue base. If you increase your revenue base, you are able to support your expenditure. But if you do not increase our revenue base and our expenditure is increasing, we are going to have a rising budget deficit and we are going to go back into the same problem. So one of the ways that government is uh, using to increase our revenue base is to ensure that our tax laws are, are complied with or enforce the tax laws. But I think we should not only rely on taxes, otherwise it will be counterproductive. A lot of businesses are complaining about the numerous taxes, the amendment in taxes, enforcement of taxes on them. And so for me, we should diversify our revenue sources. And one of the ways of doing that is to increase the production of our primary commodity, which is if we support program that will increase the production of cocoa, increasing the yield in cocoa sector, it will help us. The other thing is to increase production and export of gold. And the last is hydrocarbon, that's oil and gas. If we implement the right measures to increase the production of our primary commodities, we are going to earn more revenue as opposed to keeping uh, taxing people. And then obviously, like I said, if business are overtaxed, it will be counterproductive. They will, be not, they will not be able to employ people and you will not get the revenue that we anticipate to get. The Budget Committee of Parliament will work hard to check any unplanned expenditure in the coming months. That's assurance coming from the Chairman of Parliament's Finance Committee, Patrick Buama. Now, it follows concerns that the country will once again not escape the election spending curse because Parliament will fail to exercise its oversight responsibilities. But the Chairman of the Parliament Finance Committee, Patrick Buama, disagrees. I that because of some of these challenges, Parliament, in its wisdom, through the new rules of the House, has set up a budget committee. So that budget committee will have that oversight and ensure that we stay within our budgetary limits and even reduce expenditure. The Finance Committee will complement them, but the overall basis will be to ensure that we stay within our budget uh, 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 numbers. Now, the Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Reverend Daniel Ogwami Tete, is asking financial sector players to be risk conscious and put up measures to ensure sustainability. Speaking at the 2024 Risk Summit Africa, he said businesses must be innovative to thrive regardless of the current economic challenges. Here's a report. The Risk Summit Africa stands as a prominent conference dedicated to the field of governance, risk compliance, and audits across African continent. The summit served as a gathering point for professionals, experts, and thought leaders hailing from diverse industries encompassing finance, insurance, healthcare, cybersecurity, and more. At the summit, Reverend Obama Tete entreated business to be more vigilant. The rise of digital payments, alternative investment, and fintech innovations have disrupted traditional financing models. However, challenges such as low financial inclusion, cyber security, and a lag in regulatory adaptability persists. Additionally, the country's economic vulnerabilities exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic and global economic shocks have highlighted the need for resilient systems. Navigating this complex environment requires strategic thinking, innovation, and a deep understanding of our evolving financial ecosystem. I anticipate the Risk Summit Africa 2024 will provide a vital platform to explore these challenges and opportunities. Permit me, ladies and gentlemen, to paint on a broad canvas 
the essence of building resilience and charting the path forward. Chief Executive Officer for Redrick Consulting Firm, Frederick Aikins, explained the rationale behind the event. I believe that there are a lot of risk professionals out there who need some guidance, okay, um, in terms of understanding what risk is, you know, and understanding what is happening in terms of the risk landscape. You look at technological advancements with its cyber risks. You look at um, regulatory issues and the need for us to have compliance. You also look at um, globalization and then supply chain risks. And then look at, uh, you know, issues concerning, you know, social and political risks. All these things are affecting us one way or the other. So risk professionals have to understand the landscape and also um, 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 embrace the fact that risks are no more isolated, but they are kind of interconnected. Okay, there are interdependencies, there are systemic risks, and all these things. So this event is actually going to bring us together to be able to have a dialogue. The summit primarily concentrates on navigating emerging risk, enhancing audit frameworks, and fostering collaboration in information exchange. Now, Chief Executive Officer of the Maxwell Investment Group, Dr. Maxwell Ampon, is asking small and medium skill enterprises to invest monies and, uh, from government and, of course, other private firms judiciously to expand the operations. Speaking to Joy Business at a GCB Bank SME capacity building workshop, he called on these SMEs to be more vigilant. The GCB Bank SME capacity building workshop is to enhance operational efficiency and resilience, access to finance to ensure stability within the SME space. Chief Executive Officer for Maxwell Investment Group, Maxwell Ampon is asking government to invest in critical areas within the SME space. Youth, we have to be vigilant. Our features are in our hands now. A lot of things are possible if we just take a step to ensure that the right thing is done. We are here with stakeholders like Development Bank Ghana, like GCB Bank, who are telling us all these heavy figures, as you've mentioned, making promises here and there. And um, we have to ensure that what they've said they will do. I'm very happy that the representative from Development Bank Ghana said that some of the financial literacy courses are certified and would soon, in conjunction with the University of Ghana, be offered in Chi and in Ga and hopefully in other languages like Ewe, Dagbani and, and the others as well. When you make such a promise, to a youth in Boko, in Tumu, in Savelugu, around the, a flower border somewhere. It's a huge opportunity. The onus is on us to follow up. Head of Corporate Banking Business at GCB Bank PLC, Linus Kumi, reiterated the bank's commitment to supporting SMEs. Bank, uh, we, we believe SMEs play a very vital role in our economy. So we thought it was a good opportunity to come in and build their capacity on how to assess funding, one, and also understand the dynamics in the, in the markets to be able to penetrate all the, um, the challenges and hurdles that we have within that space. If you do not understand or you don't have an appreciation of the dynamics within that space, it turns out that you will borrow the money and then misapply it. Our goal was to get that training in place, let them understand how to structure your finances, and then we'll be able to support um, the business. JCB has the largest SME customer base, and by virtue of what we do, we fund this, these businesses. More on the SME sector, MTN has expressed its commitment to support micro, small, and medium enterprises to access funding through its Momo platform. The telecom giant who has championed digital payment solutions noted that it will, in partnership with some commercial banks, offer credit facilities for SMEs. Abu Bakar Sadiq Mohammed, head of SME sales, has been speaking to Joy Business at the MTN SME Fair stationed here in Accra. The MTN SME Fair is a gathering of various micro, small and medium companies to showcase their products and services. The fair, which is stationed near the Accra Mall, is part of activities to mark the MTN SME month. In its bid to support the SME sector, MTN Ghana continues to champion innovative solutions which will enhance the operations of startups and entrepreneurs. Addressing the concern of credit accessibility, head of SME sales at MTN, Abu Bakar Siddiq Mohammed, stated MTN's resolve to provide SMEs with credit facilities through its mobile money services. Amuma Money has an inbuilt uh, accesses for specific loans that enable the SMEs to access them without even any collateral. 
and they are able to fund their businesses. When they pay, they stand the opportunity of even uh, getting more of these loans. And in addition to that, we are also partnering some banks, financial institutions, who are partners. And then when an SME requires a loan bigger than the bucket that MTN Mobile Money offers, then we will refer them to them so that they will assess them. MTN Ghana also plans to extend its SME capacity building to small and medium enterprises across the country. We did the Accra capacity building for 120 selected SMEs. We assembled them in MTN House and uh, we also had our partners that we are working with. They have given them a lot of information, a lot of solutions have also been preferred to these SMEs in terms of technology that MTN offers. Our partner banks have also been able to take them through the loan facilities that they have and also we also have we even had insurance companies that partnered us so that at least they'll be able to spell out the importance of insurance for these SMEs. An application for an interim preservation of $25 million has been granted by the Commercial Court Division of the High Court in relation to a case involving the construction of the Bonkra Integrated Logistic Terminal in the Ashanti region. This follows the failure of the defendant, Just More Construction, to follow through an order by an arbitral tribunal. Already, Ashanti Port Services Limited, who is pursuing the case, are in legal tussle with Just More Construction and the Ghana Shippers Authority in two separate cases. There is more in the following report. The complainant, Ashanti Port Services Limited, went to court after the respondent, Jasmo Construction, failed to show evidence of preservation of the awarded $25 million. In a response, counsel for Jasmo Construction claimed the adjudication body lacked jurisdiction to make the decision, but the court upheld the decision of the arbitration body until the short cutting of the Buanka Integrated Logistic Terminal in 2020, the project was on the drawing board for close to 18 years. The project, when completed, will link ports at Tema and Takrade to other parts of the country and neighboring countries. A concessionaire, Ashanti Ports Services Limited, was to build and operate for 30 years before transfer to the government. But the contract was terminated by the Ghana Shippers Authority over allegations the concessionaire was unable to meet financial obligations. These concerns were raised during a recent working visit to the project site by the Parliamentary Select Committee on Transport, led by Kennedy Oseinyakon. The committee have already requested for all correspondence leading to the termination of their. I mean, when we get those letters, we will be much informed as to what exactly has taken place. So I think uh, let's wait to get those documents as I have requested for. Uh, you will have the opportunity to get copies of it if you want. When I, immediately when the committee obtains those doc documents, we will not hide it from the public. We came with you. You are part of the team that came. You have the right to get the document. And we'll make it available to the public. So don't worry. Definitely we will have it and we will, we will have a sufficient. The concessionaire is presently in court seeking declaration of the unilateral termination of the agreement as unlawful and the halt of the project pending the court process. Among other reliefs, the claimant is seeking damages of the expenses incurred of about 16 million cities. Already, Jastmo Construction is undertaking the first phase of the project, though the contract is yet to be regularized. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima Kumasi. In more business news, the head of the Department of Information Technology and Decision Science at the University of Energy and Natural Resources, Dr. Peter Piahini, has called for a collaborative effort on digital technologies and policies, especially among the universities, due to its importance in Ghana's development. Speaking ahead of the university's third annual tech fair, Dr. Piahini noted the contribution of successive governments in the growth of the digital space but urge stakeholders to embrace it through partnerships to ensure maximum benefits. Precious Semevor reports. Department of Information Technology and Decision Science at the University of Energy and Natural Resources, Sunyai, underscores the critical importance of digital technologies and opportunities in Ghana's development strategy. The department believes IT policies and digitalization should be at the forefront of national discourse 
As part of their commitment to leveraging digital tools and innovations to improve the quality of life of Ghanaians, the university hopes to use the third annual tech fair on Friday, July 26, 2024, to bring policymakers and other key stakeholders in the industry to shape digital policy discussions and exhibitions. Dr. Peter Piahine is the head of the department. Digitalization is not just a trend, but a necessity for Ghana's economic growth. And by integrating digital technologies into various sectors, we can enhance our efficiency, transparency, fight corruption, and also promote innovation. And this tech fair is going to provide a platform for showcasing these technologies and also fostering dialogue on how they can be implemented effectively. You will be surprised to see some of the applications that students in this university have done. To the extent that students even develop applications for detecting anemia as a developing country like Ghana, technology is our surest bet for leapfrogging in nation building and development. He said institutions should embark on digital development collaboration to ensure the expected growth and benefits for Ghanaians. One of the days where people will have to carry big, big money before they can do their marketing. That is the, 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 the importance of digitalization. And we all know that digitalization has come to stay. All of us as a country, we must embrace it. Irrespective of who is spearheading it, we must embrace it. And it, there are history or there are track records to show that successive government and current government, they have missed significant significant contribution and effort in trying to realize or making this digitalization agenda a reality. And we as a department, we are poised and we are always uh, ready to collaborate and work with any institution who are ready or who is ready to work and promote digitalization in Africa and also Ghana. That is why we are of the view that other sister universities should collaborate with us. This is not just a, a unique affair. This is a national affair because the future is now is not just for our department, but it's, it's for our country, Ghana. The UNE 2024 Tech Fair is themed The Future is Now, integrating digitalization in Ghana's development agenda. Precious Summer for Joy News, Sunyai. A science and technology fair has been instituted for students in basic and senior high schools in the Western North region to expand the transformative power of education. The fair offers a platform for students to showcase their creativity, ingenuity and problem solving skills. It is also an opportunity to inspire and be inspired by endless possibilities that science and technology offer. The STEM fields of engagements include coding, website development, virtual reality, app development, robotics, 3D printing, artificial intelligence and digital skills. The fair is sponsored by Asati Gold Corporation as part of its commitment to the development and empowerment of its mining community. Speaking at the launch of the maiden edition, General Manager of Asante Gold, Stephen Asante Yamwa, noted the company's belief in a transformative power of education. Today's event is testament to the remarkable potential within each of you, our students. It is a platform for you to showcase your creativity, ingenuity, and problem-solving skills. More importantly, it is an opportunity to inspire and be inspired by the endless possibilities that science and technology offer. As you explore the various exhibits and engage in exciting experiments, I encourage you to think beyond the classroom. Consider how the principles we learn here can be applied to solve real-world challenges. The Asante Gold Ojiahohua Fair is instituted in honor of Ojiahohua Yaojebi II, Omanheni of Sishri Anyasu, and the President of the National House of Chiefs. A representative of the Omanheni, Nana Kwejo Sumya II, Chief of Sishri in Tankam and Abokumahene Anyasu traditional area, noted the future of communities in the mining enclave looks promising with the entrenched science and technology education. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah, say science in the crowd mind. Mind be a science anymore. Science is now the tool for industrial revolution. Without it, countries can develop. I am positive of a future of more opportunities. I am a friend of science and technology. I just say, a number of my China and I say, if you work on. 
So omu wa dimdiye ewa yo Science ni Ene tekele juma Ewa Ema omano Ekwa ne nimu About 50 schools are participating In a maiden fair under the theme Empowering tomorrow's innovators today You're still watching Prime Business the chief executive for the National Petroleum Authority, Dr. Mustafa Abdul Hamid, has disputed claims that government is not paying attention to the issues raised by stakeholders in the value chain with regards to the implementation of the cylinder recirculation model. According to him, the authority is ready to give LPG dealers ample time to migrate onto the new system of distributing gas, which has been adopted by many countries. Dr. Hamid emphasized that dealers can be given more years to be able to recoup their investments in the filling station concept. He spoke to journalists at the Ghana Downstream Awards and Gala Night here in Accra. I mean, they recognize that it's inevitable. Um, change is inevitable. The whole world is going CRM. I'm not sure that Ghana can afford to say that we want to be the only country in the world that continues to live in the past. <laughs> like somebody said, um, we didn't leave the Stone Age because there were shortage of stones. <laughs> you, you get me? So in the same vein, CRM has come, um, it will come. We are very supportive of them. Um, a lot of them, um, they have facilities that are very, uh, maybe two years, three years old and so on. We've been kind enough to grant them up to five years to operate and recoup their, their interest or their profits before we completely roll over into CRM. So the government is not insensitive to their businesses at all. There is no animosity as far as I'm concerned. If they want to take even 10 years, they can do it. But whether 20 years or 30 years, there will be a time when there will be no filling stations. I mean, really and truly, really and truly. There's no way NPA can become an investor. For what purpose? We are, we are regulated by law, the NPA Act. We are a regulator. NPA cannot do business. It's against the law, so it's not true. That's all. Simple. I truly appreciate your time watching Prime Business with me, Pius Kojo Baka. For more business stories, do log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Razak Musbao is next with Prime Sports. Do enjoy.